more importantly, your neighbors aren't even fucking thinking about you. They're too worried about their own traps. They're too worried about all the, being, being a respectable, informed citizen themselves, okay? Also, you can't, inf you can't afford to be an informed, respectable, good consumer, okay? You can't afford to do all these things. Take your kids to uh, karate practice and learn a new language and have the right whiskey and the right wristwatch. And do you know how much that all that shit in the, in the church... Uh, picnics and baked it. Do you know how much time and fucking money all that stuff costs? I don't have any of that in my life and I still don't have free time because I have to do eight hours of fucking work every day to get my business to where I want it to be so that I can retire really fucking rich. Like these guys act as if they have money. You, these guys live as if they have money. You are, if you are middle class and you have all these traps and all this debt and all these things that you're living with and family and all that, you're a subsistence level peasant living paycheck to paycheck, okay? Recognize that. You're a subsistence level paycheck, uh, subsistence level peasant living paycheck to paycheck. That's, that's your fucking reality, dude, okay? And you're fucking around doing all these different things because you are living through other people's opinions and other people's life instead of chasing your own fulfillment, okay? You cannot afford to be in a, a re informed, respectable, good consumer who's doing all these things because you don't have the time and you don't have the fucking money, all right? Because you are poor. It is like your house is on fire and you're worried about rearranging the furniture, okay? Your lifestyle is on fire. Your whole thing is on fire, okay? All the time. You have to get out. You have to get out. You're living in a burning house and you're fucking around with the right whiskey and learning a language and, and teaching your kids violin and shit. Like you can't afford any of that stuff, dude. Can't afford it, right? That's for rich people. That stuff is for rich people. Rich people can afford to fuck around like that, but you can't. You need to start chasing fulfillment and you need to forget about status, okay? You can chase status in a different way in terms of being a, a rich business owner, but chasing that middle-class bullshit status, working your way up to middle management, get the fuck out of here. That's garbage, forget about it. Start living for yourself. Next point, being a good consumer and buying things is important. You were taught that, that you need the right China for the right guests when you are a subsistence level peasant. I'm gonna hit you again with it. You're living in a burning house. You can't afford a $300 golf shirt, okay? You need to take pride in being a producer, not a motherfucking consumer. A consumer is a fucking slave. A consumer is the dumbass who posts on Google Apps that his Google Maps doesn't work properly on his new phone and it's all in caps and he's yelling and he's upset because he thinks that someone from Google is actually gonna read his retarded comment and he thinks that he's that the free app is just owed to him to work perfectly to beam his coordinates into space on his new phone and never have any problems. He's so entitled and so retarded and such a, a consumer that he can't see anything past that, all right? You need to destroy that consumer mentality completely and develop your producer mentality. Whenever I look at someone else's product, I don't look at it from I'm I like I bought it and I'm upset. I look at it from like his perspective as the producer. Okay, I look at everything from a producer's perspective. All right, it's all about producing to get paid. You need to become the guy on the other side of the curtain, not the fucking dumbass who's just getting brainwashed. You need to become the producer. And you need to consume as little as much as possible because you're fucking poor. You can't buy stuff until you're rich. Otherwise, you're going to be in debt. And you need to save money and you need to reinvest money into your business and you need to live below your expenses, okay? You need to become a minimalist on the consumer end and you need to become a maximalist on the producer end because you need to produce a lot to get paid and you need to produce valuable products and services to get paid to get the fuck out of uh, wage slavery. And... If you've got debt, then you need to work even harder to get rid of that stuff, okay? Minimalism is the move, and building a money machine is the move. Then, once your money machine is up and running, okay, and you're making $200,000 a year, or 100000 but you've moved to, like, a second world or a third world country or whatever, then you can do what you want, then you have, and, you, and you've built up a lot of savings and all that, okay? Then you can do whatever the fuck you want. But when you're poor and you're in debt, you can't do anything. Okay, so murder that consumer-based mentality. Murder it, murder it, bury that, 
and become our producer and become a minimalist on the, on the consumer side. If you want to see how to do that, check out my book, How to Get Organized, that has how to get everything down in, to efficient minimalism on all aspects of your life. Next point, let the professionals manage your money, okay? This is the worst thing about the middle class uh, script is the way that they handle finances, okay? This is the worst way to handle money. Get a job, uh, go into debt, and then give whatever money you have left over to the professionals to manage, to like give away to someone else for them to manage, okay? Because they're gonna be able to manage their money better than you and they care about your money as much as you do. Both of those are not true. Okay. Also, you don't have any money because uh, you're in debt. Okay. When you're in debt, you don't have any money. Your assets are net negative. You don't have any money because there is no such thing as good debt. And you don't own that house. That bank owns that house. Okay. So you're in debt 300 grand or more, right? With all the other things combined. So you actually don't have any money. However, the money managers that you're giving your money to, you assume them to be able to handle, to be able to invest it well. In reality, 99% of mutual funds underperform the S&P, which means that the fund manager who know, who looks and acts like he knows what he's talking about doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about because no one knows where the market's going to go. And the best investors in the world, like George Soros and Warren Buffett, average maybe 20% a year. But you need you know, a ton of money to be able to invest with those guys because they don't take on uh, small clients like mutual funds do, okay? Instead, you should be investing in the actual S&P, which averages 8% a year or has over the last 100 years, and you buy it through um, an exchange-traded fund or an ETF. However, that is not going to get you rich, and you don't have money to invest in it at this point because you're probably in debt. Your money should be going towards building a comfortable safety net for if shit goes wrong and um, having a a comfortable amount of savings and the rest should go into your business being pumped back and reinvested into your business until you have more money than you can reinvest in your business and until you your savings are fucking maxed out then you can buy the in the ETF if you assume that the US economy is not going to collapse within the, the next 50 or 60 years or you can buy like medium term bond funds which average like five or six percent a year and live off the interest, but none of that shit's going to make you rich. Okay. The, the stock market and, and midterm bonds funds are make rich people already richer. Okay. So if you have a million dollars in the bank and you have um, 6% interest on your bonds, you can live off the coupon and live off that $60,000 a year. But until that point, like don't expect the market to make you rich. Okay. But getting back to the point, letting the professional manage your money, is one, you don't have money, two, they are gonna underperform uh, the market where you could just buy an ETF. Next point, escaping reality is a good use of your time, okay? We talked about the escapes in part one and they are primarily booze, sports ball, and porn, all right? Porn is the sort of non-acceptable but quietly acceptable one. The acceptable one are booze and sports. And food. If you've worked a corporate job, you'll know that this is very true of all the married men because they can't wait till it's Friday and, and they get to go out for beers. It's like, and the other one's like, dude, we're going for beers. Yeah, let's do it. And chicken wings and the 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 beer, and that's that's their fucking big, that's their big night. Okay. 